The Star Wars universe is constantly expanding. But how the heck are you going to keep tabs on it without a holocron? And where in the rim can I score the juiciest news and rumors? Ah, you seek State of the Empire, Consequence of Sound's Star Wars Speculation Podcast, where we look for news in Alderaan places. We dig into the Sarlacc pit of the internet for the hottest intel in the galaxy far, far away. Make Indiana Jones inquiries and keep watch for the latest on Willow. Find us on consequenceofsound.net or wherever you procure fine podcasts. It's the show you're looking for. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org, Consequence of Sound, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, Wherever you're listening from today, please do hit the subscribe button before we get started. Keep up with all of the interviews that we put out every single week, whether you're listening on Spotify, on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts from. I'm Kyle Merritt. Today, my guest, Matthew Hoke of Phosphorescent. He's back with a brand new record called C'est La Vie. We're going to talk about uh, how Sense of Place plays into it. Nashville, New England, Australia. We'll also get into facing mortality after uh, dealing with uh, a serious illness and facing that mortality even further when he became a father. We'll also find something relevant to the season with a song of his called Christmas Down Under and a recent cover he did of a Radiohead song. It's Kyle Meredith with Phosphorescent. Hello. C'est la vie, beautiful record. Before we get into that, though, I, I'll bring up, uh, <laughs> I, I saw the other day that you were on stage, and of course, everybody kind of gravitated that you you play, you pulled out a Radiohead cover. You played House of Cards, and I was just wondering if that was any for oh, any yeah. reason. Not, not a, I, yeah, not a sexy story there either, really. Just that I don't, I don't really, I'm not very good at planning these things out. Like, I, I didn't know that was going to be really released, actually, uh, but we were flying from L.A. to New York, or I was, to do a radio session, and then we were going to play a show later in the week. And uh, well, that's just what I was listening to on the airplane, you know. And when I got there, they asked if I could play a cover song, and I said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> <laughs> so that was the, that was I've been listening to that record on the headphones, and uh, I love that song. And you know, I just thought, well, I'll do that one. Just interesting how the, just those little moments, you know. No, seriously, it's it's like uh, it's weird when things get uh, sometimes you know they get some traction or whatever, and like, or they just you know, uh, I guess are. I mean, like you know, I'm very considered about putting out a record, for example. You know, like I'm I'm uh, thinking of every every possible thing when I make these records, but. Uh, uh, things like that. It's like, yeah, it, it truly was the song that I was listening to on the airplane <laughs> twenty minutes twenty minutes before uh, before you know they asked if I could play a cover. So that's one of my favorite Radiohead songs, which is why I wanted to ask. Me I mean, that's too, just, man. Me too. Yeah. It's such a good song. Beautiful. And at the time, I mean, when, when it first came out, it was like, wait a second, did did Tom York just write like a kind of a sexy song? Is is this sexy? I think it is. I, I, yeah, <laughs> agreed. Yeah, I, that whole record kind of feels that way to me. Yeah. In a way that, uh, that none of their others do. Well, uh, on to C'est La Vie then, you know, the, the one that you did actually labor over and, and think about a lot. <laughs> the first yeah. thing I noticed when, when, you know, and part of it was, you know, the stories behind it and the press, but, but also <laughs> when I listened to it, there seems like there was a strong sense of place, maybe more so than other times. I mean, because you hit on Nashville. Obviously, we got uh, New England, you know, in the in the first single, and Australia in, in Christmas Down Under, and there's even a song called There From Here. And I don't, is that coincidental, or, or you know, was that sort of part, because of what was around you? Yeah, you know, I, um, it's actually an interesting question, because I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, fully know the answer but i think it does tie into the idea of of uh this one being more uh this record allowing like uh the like the actualities of 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 my life to be directly in the songs you know which which i think i was always a little a little bit more i don't know like uh, obtuse about it before uh or, or or you know would purposefully uh kind of obscure things i think whereas this one i think was allows open to the idea of allowing my, my real life to be to be there is that you, you see what i'm saying yeah, so, yeah. so that then that also that also would include you know yeah where where my place at that time you know physical place <laughs> it, it also got in there as well yeah and i know part of that story that you know that you've been talking about a little bit of course you're a family man now you're you're a parent i thought you know I, i'm a parent too and i thought you know kids will put the fear of failure 
in you for a lot of people. And, like and yeah, and when I heard New Birth in New England, I mean, this is one of your catchiest songs. I thought, I wonder if that's the fear of failure right there. Like, I need a hit because <laughs> it's it's seriously catchy, you know? <laughs> no, it definitely wasn't that. I mean, I, I uh, it's yeah, that kind of stuff never, never happens like that in, in, a, in a specific way. Like, it's like uh, that song just happened. I mean, like I, I was kind of goofing around with my daughter, actually, and and, uh, and came up with that with that riff. And it was like, oh, well, this is. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. Uh, I mean, I don't actually have much to say about this, actually. I, I think I know what you mean, that it is, it is for, for sure like a different kind of song, so much so that I had a real a real disagreement with the label about having that be the, the first single. Because I, I I do think it was it's such an outlier, you know, in 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 the the phosphorescent catalog, you know. But I I love the song, and and it turns out I think they were right because I guess people are, you know, they like it, you know. I mean, like I like it too, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I I don't think it represents the record really in a, in a in a it, to be direct about it. I, yeah, I, I think it's like it's uh it's kind of like a red herring or something like that, you know what I mean. This stuff is all really tricky because for me, like you know, I can only see it I can only see it in the way that I see it, which is like I've been doing this my whole life, you know, like I, I, this is my life and and i i see this body of work as like a as an expansion but i think i'm probably the only person you know in the world that that knows every song the way, right. you know i mean right. like it's not it's just, and you know so this is this is like yeah it's kind of a new thing to realize that um I, yeah it, 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 it making this record was was like it was the first time that i knew that people were going to hear it like there, there, there was an ex expectation of, of a, and a built-in you know at this point there are people who are going to get the record regardless of what i make right and they're going to hear it and they're going to have some feelings about it and like that, that was kind Kind of new, you know, for, for me. I mean, you, it's okay. You're a hit maker now. You got New Birth. You had Song for Zula. You're, you're a hit man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, stick around. Let's see where we go from here. Yeah. <laughs> The, the the really you know I think crappy side from what I from what I gather about you know going into this record is, is that you did get sick and the, the, you know you, you had to deal with sort of existence as I read uh, I haven't had the experience of contemplating life and death to any satisfactory answer and being faced yeah, with it in the yeah. way you were I, I'd wondered is there a resolution inside yourself now that you've come to terms or peace. No, absolutely not. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, like, that, you know, yeah, fuck, exactly. No, that's, and to, to put it, I don't want to, like, beleaguer this point, but I mean, like, that's the thing about, about this record that, that um, I think the first, the first song, you know, like, m maybe, maybe sugarcoats it or something. I, I feel like this record is, is maybe one of the roughest one of, roughest ones I've made uh, in terms of, like, I, I, I felt, uh, <sighs> Like I felt uh, that I was in a heavy place when I was writing most of these songs. They felt like I was worried about some of them. That I thought they were it was a little too rough. Like uh, about this stuff. About you know. I mean, yeah. You know. I mean, look, we're all gonna die. You know. Like we're <laughs> my kids are gonna die. I'm gonna die. You're gonna die. And like it's the saddest fucking thing in the world. And uh, to me, I can't. I, every time I sat down to write a song, that was just standing there. Like it was looming in this huge way. That yeah, I don't know. I mean. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't uh, capture, I guess, the gravity of it, or maybe I did. I don't. I don't. I don't know. But I mean, that is what I was thinking about. Basically, every every time I sat down and tried to write a song, it was, you know, this looming thing. It's a. It's you know, it's a fucking sad deal. It reminded me of um, there was a Kerouac quote somewhere along the line before he knew he had a daughter, and and I think someone was just asking him if he ever wanted to have kids, and he said, Why would I? bring someone in, into this world only for them to die later like that's you, you know yeah. that's uh of course he did he, he you know he didn't know he had a daughter and then you know she came along wait, wait he didn't know at that time he didn't know it you know it was one of those uh i, I wow. pun intended probably one of those on the road babies so uh you know it's right right you know right there but uh yeah, anyway but yeah no then it really is that i mean it really you know like when i mean you said you you're how many how many kids do you have i have one no, but I mean, it, it like it. it uh, t I mean, I guess in some way, I've always, you know, been super sad about the idea of my own death, and you know, I mean, like it's it's all awful stuff. But the idea that these beautiful little things, you know, like the, the moment you see them and then like come to love them, you know, that the, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's really rough stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> to it realize is. that they're, you know, you know, it's yeah. like it's crazy that all of us humans run around doing this thing, <laughs> you know, and, and, <laughs> and like we all we all know this. It's all happening, and it's just—it's just the crazy.
craziest thing. I mean, that ignorance is bliss line so comes into play right there because I think of yeah, you know, just I don't know, I don't know if animals are aware of it or not, and I, I like to believe that they're not, and they can just go around, you know, just me too, ignorant yeah, and happy that. about the I whole think thing. Not. I think that's true. I really do think that's true, and I think that's like the. Although I don't think I mean you know I don't know I feel like uh, I think some of the some of the you know I think monkeys probably are are uh, <laughs> aware of it somehow you know like right. apes and, and uh, yeah but it's yeah it's it's just a, it's just the saddest thing. Well, turning uh, I, I wouldn't say to happier pastures but to different pastures anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the um, in the title track you, you kind of brought that up a little bit as I heard it at least as I interpret it, it it's a look at who you were and not being that person anymore but I thought it's worth noting that you're not exactly saying who you are it's just that you're not that guy anymore right right that is yeah right i i actually uh in a weird way that song um i'm only like halfway putting my tongue in my cheek i think by saying you know i i don't know what it means the line and also and also the larger the larger picture but i do think it is that feeling of of uh and i think it kind of that's why the record's called what it is you know there's a specific sort of feeling of um yeah i don't know uncertainty i guess you know like uh uh I definitely don't know what what's on the other side. I guess is is kind of where that ends up. That it continues a little bit in, in there from here, which might be my favorite from the record. It's probably keep coming back to it, but you know, there's those lyrics oh, nice. I found interesting where you know Romy said it best. You got to let it rest, and and further along, I believe it was around the horn where you said everything is fine. And you know, along with that title phrase, you know, "C'est la vie," you know, even with the heaviness, even with with the darkness of the the themes that you're kind of hitting on, I do get the strong sense of you know, hey man, chill out. Just what can you do? Well, look, that's exactly right. What I mean, what choice? That's exactly right. What else can you do? You know what I, I mean? You can, you, you can, uh, it seems to me like futile to, to, you know, to sort of be continually in some sort of state of angst, you know, about, so yeah, what, I mean, what can you do? You have a choice. Yeah. And I think it's, it's in the, the idea that, that perception and, and attitude about, about how you want to take this all in uh, is, is, it's really, it's up to you. You know, it's, it's really, yeah. What can you do? Well, I'll, uh, I'll bring up since it is the season, we, I should probably just mention at least Christmas down under. I'm sure there is a bigger story to this, but I thought just even just the basic idea of that from from here, from this sense of place in the world, from Louisville, Kentucky, or, or any of you know, the, like it's a flipped environment than what most of us are used to. Like the whole mm-hmm. thing is turned upside down. You know, Christmas down under, Christmas right. in Australia. It's it's summer down there. You know, and I thought fish That's out of right. water. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you're you're nailing it exactly. That's the <laughs> Yeah, that's the whole thing on that one. Like, uh, and really, it's 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 not that um, it, it's it's not well. At least the first verse, you know, w- was pretty much written directly. Well, the first and second verse I wrote a- a- as they as they happened. Like it was. Um, I was in Australia. I uh, decided to give take a take a break from from uh, my wife and daughter and, and let them you know visit because she's from she's Australian. So uh, I just was letting them kind of hang out with with their you know their family, her parents, and they, you know my, my kids' grandparents. Um, and I went to the beach by myself, and I uh, learned to scuba dive. I, I, was, I had scuba, been scuba diving all day, and yeah, you know, it's it, it's really uh, everything felt very, very, very dislocated. You know, and I was I was at that point, I guess I'd I guess been away from my daughter for longer than I ever had at that point. Cause she was still um, you know a year old. I was missing her like crazy, and a storm came in. It was like a super summery you know sort of tropical thing and i just was sitting in the hotel and um yeah i wrote wrote those and yeah you know you can't even even though it's uh you know summertime it was still uh christmas time and uh i think for whatever reason i've always had a um pretty serious sadness that comes around with i don't know why you know but uh the whole you know that christmas is is like uh yeah, I don't know. It's a weird thing, like all the, you know, crass commercialism and and uh, the sort of horrors that Christianity and religion has done in this world, mm-hmm. and also the the beauty of it. You know, the idea of, of what religion I think try and every every religion like they, they the the kernel of it is is such a beautiful thing. Like they're all trying to do something beautiful, and 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 yet somehow just fucking fuck it up every <laughs> every one of them. You know, like right. it's like I mean, why and God why. Why are, why are people killing each other over this stuff? And they've done it for fucking centuries. And you know, like what? A, what a horror show this is! And yeah, you know. <laughs> You think we'd learn, and, and you, it's it's you know, hard right? to be hopeful because we have been doing it for thousands of years. You know, now we're faced with, uh, you know, an environmental catastrophe. You know, that's sitting on our doorstep, yeah. and you think, man, if we can't figure that out, 
Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> it's rough stuff, right? <laughs> rough stuff out there we are complicated people uh with with lots of layers yeah. and uh or not or not at all or, you know, or not, not at all. or just basic Simple, animals yeah dumb yeah 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 throwing rocks at our own head no I, yeah i agree <laughs> yeah thanks for making me feel better about you know existence yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean it though, man. Uh, I love the record, and it does give me senses of hope. And you know, music does that, and 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 that's always you know why we turn to it. We're obsessed monkeys ourselves, you know. With yeah, with yeah, sounds. yeah. And uh, I appreciate what you do. I really do. Well, thanks, man. I really thank you, uh, Matthew. It's, it's been a lot of fun, man. I really thanks. appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for that. Are you gonna? Are you? You'll be around at the Louisville show. I will. I will definitely be around. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Cool, miss man. That, yeah, so. come say hi. Come say hi. We'll do. Awesome, man. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for the conversation. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. My thanks to Matthew from Phosphorescent for the call. The new record is called C'est La Vie. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to. Uh, again, whether you're checking us out on YouTube, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts from. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern, where you can also find some bonus episodes of this series. You can also find me on Twitter at Kyle Meredith, Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. I am Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.